Anyway, Ethan it's Klein popped off on thing. Twitter, apparently, friend of the show thing. slash my co-host, uh, Ethan Klein, uh, posted some, a sequence of tweets, okay? And, of course, it's got everybody really pissed off because, you know, everybody loves the shit on Ethan because, you know, he's, a, he's no longer, he's no longer funny, dude. He's too, he's too liberal, brother. So, Ethan Klein says, Joe Rogan, who lives on elk meat, egg yolk, and human growth hormone with lungs full of tar, thinks he's healthier than everyone. This motherfucker's such a Ten bitch that when he got yeah. COVID, he threw the kitchen sink at it. If you're so healthy, just ride it out like you say a man should. Dude has caused so much vaccine hesitancy and misinformation, he doesn't even have the balls to stand by the shit he preaches. Now he's on a show talking about how fat people should just die of COVID. Dude is such a fucking piece of shit. Instead of getting vaccinated, he takes Regeneron, an experimental drug that was developed alongside the mRNA vaccine. His logic makes no sense. And then credits Ivermectin, which does fucking nothing for COVID. Not to mention whatever the fuck is in Alpha Brain. Meanwhile, while Joe is on a big pharma conspiracy against vaccines, someone needs to ask him who makes Ivermectin and Regeneron and all the other shit Less he took when he had COVID. So he's right about all of this. Uh, I don't think Joe Rogan is a beacon of health or a beacon of, uh, you know, physical excellence or anything like that. Okay. He's not, he just straight up. Isn't like he literally had fucking bubble gut from HGH. Okay. But all these dumbasses, of course, are going to fucking turn around and be like, dude, you look like, you know, you look like you're fat or whatever the fuck. And up oh, there it is right on the money. Here is the dumbass. Ethan Klein questions if Joe Rogan is healthy. Ethan Klein, age 36. Joe Rogan, age 54. That's what, uh, that's what Keemstar said. Okay. Once again, this is the unfortunate byproduct of unironic fucking fat shaming. Like, this is what the fat shamer people talk about when they say, like, this is what the fat shamer, anti-fat shaming people talk about when they say, like, just because you're skinny doesn't mean you're fucking healthy. And it's true. Look at me, motherfucker. I work out every goddamn day. I got high cholesterol, okay? It doesn't mean anything. I eat chicken every fucking day. And on top of that, I work out every goddamn day. And I still have high cholesterol because sometimes you just don't know. It's GG's, okay? You got bad genes sometimes, okay? Now, Joe Rogan is a great example of this because, like, Bro, he, his heart is enlarged from fucking HGH. Like, he is not a healthy person, okay? He's not a beacon of health. Just because he looks a certain type of way doesn't mean that he's a healthy person. All of those fucking Hollywood actors that take, uh, that cycle steroids, usually, okay? They're shaving off a couple years off the top fucking tippy toe of their lives. Now, is Ethan Klein healthy? No, okay? He's not that healthy either. Nobody's looking to Ethan as like the fucking beacon of healthcare and excellence. He's just making accurate points that also correspond to the scientific consensus on the matter. That's it. Okay? He didn't claim to be fucking uh, someone who is healthy. Other people are turning around and being like, nah, fuck you, you're fat. Shut the fuck up. Okay, dude, I guess that's how we're doing it now. That's, that's how we should do it, okay? We should just... Uh, The other, actually, Keemstar is fucking fat. Like, well, what kind of take is this? Keemstar is also fat. Why is he turning around and being like, Ethan, you're fat. Shut the fuck up. Okay, then you shut the fuck up too, dumbass. Why are Ethan Klein slash a your fans claiming I'm fat shaming Ethan? I didn't mention his weight at all, but you all did. I think you're horrible for doing it. It's 2022. Grow up. Stream issues solved finally. Ha ha ha. It's so strange. Also, none of this, absolutely 0% of this, actually fucking uh, addresses what Ethan Klein is saying, which is, one, Joe Rogan is not exactly a beacon of excellent, dis excellence, uh, healthcare excellence, despite the way that like people assume he is, just because he's fucking shredded at 54. Uh, that requires you know a, a serious training regimen, for sure. But that doesn't mean he's fucking healthy. He's putting a lot of shit in his body, okay? And, and two, it's not like motherfuckers are saying, it's not like Ethan is saying, like, I'm actually way healthier than Joe Rogan. He didn't fucking say that, okay? He's simply talking about how Joe Rogan, despite taking a whole bunch of fucking suppy boys that the FDA has not approved, okay, 
and selling a whole bunch of suppy boys that the FDA will never approve because, you know, these are uh, vitamins, vitamins, okay? Um, is, is telling people that, you know, you shouldn't take the fucking vaccine and also you should just lose weight. And if you don't lose weight, you're fucking, you kind of deserve it. And that's really fucked up. Picture a Keemstar at the gym. Yeah, this is, you know, this guy. Imagine talking shit when you look like this, bro, about people, the way people look. Hypothetically, I say don't get addicted to heroin. It's bad. But since I'm addicted to heroin, I have no idea what I'm talking about. I need to shut the fuck up and be shamed aggressively. What do you mean? Okay. Here is the issue. Okay. America is fucking obese. Okay. America has a lot of comorbidities and America is fucking obese. So obviously when a public health official decides to make decisions on behalf of the American public, they're not making it on behalf of like the French public that fucking uh, has a steady diet of cigarettes and coffee and, and whatever the fuck the French do, they eat a wee wee baguette in the morning and they're skinnier overall. Okay. They have to make a decision on behalf of America. Okay. So it is incredibly fucking stupid when Joe Rogan and others say, oh, well, don't be fat. Okay, dog, is there a fucking vaccine against being fat? Because I will take that shit, okay? I would never, I would, oh my God, the amount of food I would eat, I would gorge myself. I would literally, I would wake up in the morning and I would pump myself full of fucking lard. I would be eating like 8,000 calories every fucking meal. And then I would just take the fat vaccine and boom, I'm good. I'm shredded, okay? But because that doesn't exist, and uh, losing weight, especially uh, because weight is obviously tied to your diet and that your dietary habits are in many ways not exactly something you can technically control or in inadvertent ways it impacts you because of like lobbying, high fructose corn syrup, and uh, lack of access to food education, food deserts that you might be living in, and all a litany of other complications. Losing weight is not as easy as fucking getting a vaccine. Okay. The fat vaccine does exist. It's called Trenbolone. No, uh, it's also Clenbuterol, but, you know, uh, fucking, that's not a vaccine, okay? Technically, a fat vaccine would just less the, lessen the effects of you getting fat, not stop you from getting fat. That's the other thing. When you're fucking fat, when you, when you sit next to a fat person on the bus, you don't become fat, okay? But when you sit next to fucking someone who's COVID pause, okay, and they've only been around for... You know, they, they, they didn't get their fucking negative test because the CDC told them to get the fuck back to work and they cough on you. Congratulations, you got COVID, okay? You don't get fat by proximity, but you get COVID by proximity. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm in the middle of changing my diet and I got to say frozen, frozen vegetables are a godsend. Anyway, uh, Rogan's body type is one that's hard to gain weight as a kid, so he's never been worried about being fat. I just Google it, and two-thirds of Americans are overweight. Joe's really saying, fuck 80% of the population, let him die, I'm Bill Dipperly. Yeah, that's, that's a fucking idiotic take. Now, we all agree that, obviously, if you are fucking overweight, then yes, COVID will be more vicious to you, okay? There's also scientific evidence on this. This is not just bro science. It's not just Joe Rogan saying that. And every person that is even slightly overweight that has ever been to a doctor already recognizes that because every time you go to a doctor, they're like, lose weight. Every time. Every time a fat person goes to a doctor, they're like, I broke my leg. They're like, lose weight. Bitch, I broke my leg. Lose weight. Come back. It's like, that's just the doctor thing to do. Okay. So, TikTok about blind items earlier with so like every motherfucker knows this. Every fat motherfucker knows months. this. Okay. They know. Okay. They know, except, you know, you, you also can take additional precautions and not die of COVID. Okay. You should lose weight for sure. You should have a healthy diet. You should have, uh, you, you know, you should be engaging in fitness, fitness ad break at the top of the hour into your mouth. Okay. Obviously you can avoid those ad breaks though. If you no longer want to see those ads at the top of the hour, all you need to do is subscribers. $5 are for fucking free. Oh God. Oh, brother, I'm on fucking fire today. Also, all women get told that. What? All women get told to lose weight? Oh, you're talking about, like, in general. Your doctor's not going to tell you to fucking lose weight if you're already skinny. Um, 
at the top of the hour. Listen, you might get Dan lucky. You chat. might get a fucking, you know, you might get the natural antibody to the top of the hour ad break in the form of a fucking Twitch, uh, you know, gifted sub. Or if you're not lucky enough, you're going to have to subscribe on your own for free with a fucking Twitch Prime or for $5 with, if you used your Twitch Prime already for $5, you, a regular help, subscription. The Here's one the one-minute ad break now. <sighs> They might mean that women also have unseen issues with doctors believing them. So, so it's just like, it's so stupid to just be like, just lose weight. Yeah, he's right, okay? He's right. A lot of Americans are obese, okay? But like, this is entirely separate. This is a separate conversation, okay? This is like, you know, here's how you, here's how you will never lose weight. If you fucking die of COVID, okay, that's it. Like the number one way to never lose weight is if you fucking die of COVID because you got COVID and you're unhealthy and now you're in the hospital and now you're dying. Okay. Puppers. Actually, or technically, I guess you lose all of the, uh, uh, of the weight. If being healthy, lean, keeps you from months, getting sick or dying from COVID, why did Joe throw the kitchen sink at his COVID diagnosis? Lameo, that dude was terrified. Yeah, that's the other thing. Oh, COVID, if you're healthy, is like not a big deal. Also, when I got COVID, I literally fucking tried like experimental therapies and shit. You know what I mean? And, and that's the point that shit. Ethan was making, which is like, if COVID is not that fucking big of a deal, why the fuck didn't you take it on the chin like a man? Like, why, why didn't you let your, your healthy body do the work? Okay, you're a healthy guy. Why don't you just fucking take it on the chin? Why did he? Why every did he do everything he possibly could? Matty yes. W, Spastic Hawk 27. What the fuck? Uh, Rikuto Ramen, the motherfucking goof. Uh, thank you for the five. Get the subs. Thura Cud Wire. Thank you for the ten. Get the subs. And Spastic Hawk 27 with another five. And Hazel Quasar with a five as well. At 21. Ethan coming back from hiatus after all we've been we've all been radicalized by Hassan. <laughs> David Rotinez in the fucking background too. By God, it's David Rotinez. Teacher here who just started back. I've never experienced this. As I always totally uh, was a skinny person. I've gained weight since COVID started. Went to help. find out about Thank sleep apnea that I probably place. had since before I started gaining weight. Doctor talked to me for five minutes. Literally, only said lose weight. Trash. Yeah, if you're fat, most doctors are going to tell you to fucking lose weight. That's just like, and they're right, but not fully right, okay? Losing weight, if you are overweight, always helps with a lot of issues, okay? And I say this as someone who was obese for most of his life, who lost a fuckload of weight, okay? It helps with your confidence. It helps Shit when you go to the gym and you start fucking feeling better about uh, you know, your, your brain chemicals work a little bit differently. Okay. So it's not a bad thing. It's a definitely a good thing. And it's, it's a, it's like, you know, pursuing a healthy lifestyle lifestyle is something that I am 100% an advocate for. Okay. As someone in the chat correctly pointed out, fat Solid is like the damage multiplier. CQC, chimp, no problem. Okay. Except like, you know, fat shaming is idiotic and there's plenty of empirical evidence to show that, to prove that it literally does not work in, uh, you know, stopping people from losing weight. As a matter of fact, it actually ends up, uh, you know, getting them to... Coffee Dave, Hassle. thank you for the five... Whoa, what? Thank you for the 10 gifted subs. Cassiophobia, thank you for the 10 gifted subs. And Mail Mail with the five gifted subs. Um, so, so, I'm an advocate for all of that, okay? But also, uh, you know, don't be a fucking asshole to fat people because they already know they're fat. They, they wake up every morning with that reality, okay? It weighs on them, quite literally, okay? Uh, so you just bringing that up in a random conversation is only just like, you're, you're being a fucking asshole, okay? No, no fat person has ever been like, oh my God, I'm fat? Thank you for telling me. I had no idea. I'm going to go ahead and change my entire lifestyle right now. That is a brilliant observation. That's never happened, okay? Skinny people who have never been fucking fat unironically go about their lives thinking that like, you know, they're doing a favor to fat people by fucking fat shaming them. 
Like, that's not a thing, okay? Okay, so... <laughs> so shut the fuck up about that. But also, again, this is entirely separate from the conversation about COVID. Like, yes, being overweight uh, or being obese especially and the comorbidities that that brings along will absolutely make it uh, worse for you if you end up getting COVID. And that's precisely why you should be getting vaccinated. Okay? Especially because, you know, losing weight is a very difficult process that takes very, it takes long ass uh, time and a lot of commitment. Joe agrees with you, man. Oh shit. Look at that. He has height from Cameron from leftovers. Lol. This is really well done, dude. They said it weighs on them. I mean, you know what I mean, motherfucker. I'm fucking, I, I was very fat when I was growing up. I know I, you know what I mean? You carry that shit around with you everywhere you go. Anyway, this is fire. What do you mean by saying that doctors aren't even fully, doctors aren't fully right when they tell people to lose weight? The meme in the healthcare community is that like, doctors literally fucking despise fat people and tell everyone who is like even slightly overweight to just fucking lose weight, okay? But like, sometimes it's not even just like losing weight will always help you for sure if you're overweight, but that doesn't necessarily address the problem. Okay. Like you can have fucking other underlying genetic reasons for why you have uh, uh, certain health issues that have nothing to do with your fucking weight. The weight is only like an accelerant. Okay. Chatter is no better than doctors. No, I mean, this is like a real thing. Like, there are so many fucking stories of, uh, of people who, like, there's so many stories of people who are, have, who have been misdiagnosed as a consequence of being fat because, uh, it's just the easiest thing to just be like, lose weight. It's correct, but if you're only focusing on that, then you know you're you might be missing a fuckload of uh a fuckload of other uh, issues that you would normally be uh catching anyway so texas in the meantime uh, doctors are taught to look at the most common issues first and weight is usually the problem. Anecdotes off fat people being misdiagnosed kind of silly in the face of dia, data. I mean, this is definitely a bias for sure. Uh, it's, it's something that other doctors talk about regularly. I'm not just like fucking giving you anecdotes. And also you understand that, uh, like I said, fatness is an accelerant. So no matter what the fuck the main problem is, if you lose weight, you will actually end up uh, solving at least some of the underlying symptoms, right? I'm not anti-losing weight, motherfucker. I'm not anti-losing weight, so don't come at me with that shit. I do have a doctor, yes. I have a primary care physician. I'm fancy motherfucker, dude. So I got hit by a car and went to a doctor a month later about a problem with my leg and then I hit it was like lose weight and then we can talk about it. Doctor here as well, and you're right. In fact, certain diseases are just straight up results of being overweight. Yes. The brain rot. But I already I already acknowledge that. That would be fucking insane for me to I'm not one of those fucking rad femme like a fat phobia people, okay? I, I, 
I don't know why people are coming at me and being like, I just don't understand why people are coming at me on this issue, especially because I've like talked about being fat so many times and like how complicated it is to lose the weight. I'm just anti fat phobia, even though I do engage in it uh, myself. I like, I fat shame people from time to time, you know, it just flips out. You know, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to control every now and then because I don't place it at the same level of emphasis as like, you know, hate speech, like fucking Jamila Jamila or whatever. But you know, it's not, uh, it's, it's not fat shaming to say that like a lot of underlying medical problems are, are caused by being overweight as well. Of course. <sighs> How can people watch their diets and lose weight if you eat out, uh, uh, eat out once at a restaurant and meals like 2,000 calories? You basically have to be rich enough to afford only with veggies, fruit, foods, and have the time to cook them. Nobody's saying it's easy to fucking have a healthy diet. I'm not one of those fucking dumbasses. Uh, it is very annoying when people are just like, oh, it's so stupid. It's so stupid, dude. Just like fucking, it's so easy to eat, uh, eat healthy. Like, it's not. Especially because like... A lot of people don't even know that they should be eating healthy or how to eat healthy. Okay. Um, or anyway, maybe shutting down the virus could have included promoting a variety of safe early stage treatments, including monoclonal antibodies. Instead, the mainstream media vilified governors for pushing treatments over mandates and accused Joe Rogan of using horse dewormer. Wait, what? Dude, Joe Rogan's clout is such a fucking unimaginably, like, large thing that you got fucking congresspersons sucking him off. Like, it is just, it is on a different level, bro. He is literally considered, like, the guy, okay? And also, who the fuck was anti-monoclonal antibodies? Point to a single fucking person. If you are to say that monoclonal antibodies were scarce, or it's more expensive as a treatment in comparison to the vaccine, so people should still get the vaccine, then yes, that is something that I've seen. Even then, it's rare. But this notion that they were liberals out there who were like anti-monoclonal antibodies, that's just fucking idiotic. Also, Dr. McCullough is not fucking advocating for monoclonal antibodies, and his fucking take was literally use a neti pot, you dumb fuck. At least know who you're fucking promoting. This motherfucker is the neti pot guy, isn't it? We, we covered this shit. Homie was straight like, uh, just use a neti pot with bleach and you will be fine. Actually, you will destroy COVID. Yeah, you will because you'll fucking die. Okay, good job. McCullough full on said you can't get COVID twice. What was it? What, what did he say? What do you have to put in the fucking neti pot? It wasn't bleach, but it was, wasn't it? It Three wasn't bleach. I don't know what it was. I forget what it was. It was some idiotic like shit. Okay. It, it was so the fucking stupid. Oh, he's a doctor. You're a dumbass. Yeah, I am a dumbass, but apparently not dumb enough to suggest that you could eradicate COVID by using a fucking neti pot peroxide, iodine and, and uh, peroxide of a human on PCP. Doctor fired for spreading COVID misinformation. By the way, he got fired for spreading COVID misinformation. Uh, and now he's grifting. Like, now he's, like, trying to fucking raise money I so he can, like, so sue everyone that's ever wronged him. But because we're here, because we are in a stage in uh, America now where it's just, like, everything is fucking falling apart. There's no confidence in the government. There's no, there's no like, consensus. There's no belief in data or science. We've got to a place where you can and will actually gain momentum and support. And it's just simply posturing from a team sport environment. Okay. We are only able to interpret every fucking thing. We're only able to interpret every goddamn thing. The comments talking about body shaming. What a world we live in. Unbelievable at times. What it was a fucking Keemstar. I did run the ad. You're wrong. Hasn't felt like four months. Talking about this COVID shit is boring. Can you please talk about the 90 Day Fiance star? 
had to stop selling her farce due to a heart attack? No. Eric Adams at it again. Oh, here we go, brother. That's right. Let's hear what he has to say. He's he's a fucking king. Which doctor is right? COVID-19 twice. We would have seen hundreds. If it, you could get COVID-19 twice, we would have seen hundreds of millions of cases. Do you know how susceptible the elderly are? Mm. This would have swept through the nursing homes. Over Dog, it did. Except when the elderly got COVID, they died. So technically, he's right. If you're elderly and you get COVID, you usually can't get it twice because you're fucking dead. Yo, this is the medical doctor Joe Rogan had on. Dude, fuck this. This, okay, straight up. You know how I feel about this shit, where it's like, it's fucking annoying, Once it's lame, yeah, they uh, like constantly fucking banning people, loss. Uh, or whatever the fuck, and it's like, definitely used against the left, but like, this is willing, deliberate spreading of misinformation to millions and millions and millions of fucking people, how the fuck do you stop this? How do you stop Joe Rogan from doing this? When he it knows better, Jamie tries to fucking push back, and Joe's like, no. Nah. No, actually, you're wrong, Jamie. Uh, me understand facts right. Jamie, you understand facts wrong. I mean, that's crazy. How do you stop this guy? Over and over again, we would have seen grandmothers on the ventilator 16 times. I'm telling you right now, you can't get it twice. Have, have you taken the COVID vaccine? So the answer is yes. I've also been infected twice. <laughs> I mean, it's like, I mean, this is really deadly, man. This is like, this is fucking Americans straight up deadly. This is deadly misinformation. I believe in the Malone podcast. Malone said McCullough asked him to say he was wrong about the double infection. Uh, second dude just got a very first wave of COVID and Delta variant though. And he will likely be able to get Omicron. McCullough was wrong because these variants are considered to be variant of SARS-CoV-2. Even before so Omicron, there were very well documented instances of people getting it twice. Yo, that's crazy, man. That's actually fucking bananas. Like, this is verifiably true. It is some of the... Here's what really pisses me off, okay? Here is what really, really fucking pisses me off. Now this is the content I stay subbed for. Thumbs up. I understand that interpreting data is complicated. I understand that uh, you have a legitimate fear, okay? Like, it's not a legitimate fear, but you have this, like, very primal feeling that you don't understand the medical science and it scares you and you're afraid of the vaccine Hello, or that, you know, it's like being a flat earther. The earth feels flat. Uh, why are you going to die from just the flu? Okay. That's like the same fucking level of feeling this way. So a lot of these people rely on anecdotes, right? They refuse to look at the data. They refuse to actually, I don't know, look into it a little bit further. They rely on anecdotes and they get a healthy diet full of anecdotes from their Facebook feeds, right? or from Joe Rogan, from these positions of authority, from these people that they trust. And they seek out these anecdotes. What pisses me off is, I get that. I get that fucking experience. But what makes me angry is when it's something so easily untrue, like so easily verifiably fucking false that you could also very easily recognize from anecdotes. One guy gets COVID twice, that guy's argument is done, okay? Jair Bolsonaro! That's it! Motherfucker got COVID like eight times, homie! That's it! What do you need more? Okay? There's literally fucking anecdotes over the anecdotes that you're agreeing with that would destroy the fucking anecdote that you're pointing to. So that's what I don't understand. It's like... Some of this shit you could literally fucking destroy with anecdotes. My parents' neighbor's 60-year-old lady who got COVID twice in three months? Yeah, of course people have gotten COVID twice, dude. That's crazy. I don't think you got it eight times. Okay, I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. But, like, there are more examples than just Jair Bolsonaro, the leader of fucking Brazil, of people getting COVID twice, dude. The viral figure showing Joe Rogan has 11 uh, million viewers is from two years ago. I saw the chart made by Chief Nerd on Twitter. 
that had Joe Rogan dominating legacy media with an average of 11 million uh, listeners per episode. On Chief Nerd's tweet, he said that he got the source from this Newsweek article on September 30th, 2021, which states that Joe has 11 million listeners per episode, but doesn't say where they, they got the data from. I did some Googling and found this Washington Post article. Uh, it was an article on Supercast where the writer of that article said he got like 11 million listeners statistic from an interview with Joe Rogan on the Jordan Peterson podcast from June 25th, 2019. So the statistic is used in the chart that's making the rounds on Twitter is not from Q3 of 2021, but from over two years ago. I know some of you, especially new members of the sub, may consider me a debunker for digging info. What the fuck is a debunker? Oh, like I'm cooming, like I'm debunking. Uh, for digging info on the sources, but it just shows how lazy journalism and clever editing can go viral. The fact is that the chart is using data from two years ago and that number of average listeners Joe gets has most likely changed, especially after the Spotify deal. Also, it's not an officially released statistic, but a number that Joe brought up during a casual interview. Wouldn't his viewership be more now than two years later? No, because that was at, when he was at his peak. And that was also, again, internet statistics are compares. almost always false, okay? They're very, very, very difficult to fucking uh, normalize. They're difficult to fucking interpret against like Nielsen statistics, for example. Like the TV statistics and the way that they track those metrics are very different. I used to literally do this. I, I, I did biz dev for TYT. This is like something that I looked at religiously. And there was no universal metric at the time to, to truly understand what a view count looks like. And you can recognize that simply by looking at view counts on TikTok versus view counts on Facebook when the fucking uh, uh, video faucet uh, had opened on Facebook uh, versus a YouTube view count or versus YouTube live stream viewers versus Twitch live stream viewers. Like it's not, it's not the same. Because every website uh, notoriously has different ways of tracking what uh, constitutes for a view. So that is really silly to then compare that to like downloads uh, a download doesn't necessarily mean who uh, a person is listening to it, all this other stuff. It's just, you know, the, so it's dumb. It, even if it was, uh, you know, uh, one of these websites that actually tracks what your download and your viewership looks like. Okay. So. That stuff is bullshit, but what's not bullshit is Joe Rogan still does command a gigantic fucking audience and he has just gone full-blown, boss of the fucking wall, anti-vaxxer. This is his thing. And it sucks to see as someone who used to be a fan of Joe Rogan, but this is his, uh, this is his fucking approach. It's very obvious that he is going to continue. He is going to continue doing this shit. And for that person asking, why does it matter how many people are listening? If not him, they would listen to the next conservative. No, dude, Joe Rogan doesn't just have a conservative audience. And even if it was just a conservative person, it, it doesn't matter. Like you're saying that, you know, someone is always going to fucking spread misinformation. That's like such a fucking defeatist attitude to have. Anyway. It just, it especially sucks because he can't shut the fuck up about this and he's just wrong. He is not only wrong, but he's dangerously wrong. Like if he was just wrong, if he was just, even if he was just like a flat earther, I wouldn't feel the same way. I wouldn't be this upset or disappointed in Joe Rogan because like ultimately being a flat earther, if you don't get into like the anti-Semitic side of that conspiracy theory is like a meme. You know what I mean? It's not as harmful as, as, uh, as, especially if you're just a flat earther and you don't actually then, you know, pack on other kinds of weird conspiracies that you believe in. If you just stay a flat earther, it's nowhere near as harmful as like being an anti-vaxxer. You know what I mean? Now BTW. Like it's harm is that it's a, it's, it's a way to launch off of uh, flat earth conspiracies to like a multitude of different, very actually dangerous conspiracy theories. You, you see what I'm saying? Like, I can't, I don't know, I don't know how many people, uh, without a shadow of a doubt, uh, have died because they just didn't get the vaccine because they thought like, I'm healthy, I watched Joe Rogan, which is like a substitute for doing BJJ. Um, but that number is not zero, and that should weigh on him, straight up. That reality should weigh on Joe Rogan every fucking day, that 
He reaches out to millions and millions of people. He's got old ass fucking divorce court homies that are stands of his. And he has his anti-vaxxer fucking attitude has absolutely brain poisoned people in his fucking audience that went out and didn't get the fucking vaccine because they love him and they see him as a beacon of health and prosperity. And they didn't get the vaccine because they were listening to him. And now they're fucking dead. Okay. Like you have to think about that. That, you, that should be, that should make it father. very difficult for you to go to sleep at night. Okay. When you put your fucking head, when your big bald dome on that pillow, okay. As you're lactating out of your fucking ginormous nipples that I would definitely suck. You should think for a brief moment, like, fuck man. I wonder if I've actually killed people. The answer is yes. Straight up. Okay. Straight up. Joe Rogan has, is responsible now, I know that a lot of people will turn around and be like, individual responsibility, bro. Who cares? Whatever. But like, yeah, he he 100% is responsible for people who believe in him dying because they didn't get the fucking, they didn't get the goddamn uh, vaccine. I don't think he would care because to him it's their fault they died. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely going to let you on a show now. No, he's never going to let me on a show, but it doesn't matter. I mean, clearly I don't need fucking Joe Rogan to have clout and relevance, uh, I believe. I don't have to pull a fucking Brett Weinstein and, Less than three. you know, suck his dick every night for, for you know, a thousand new Patreon subscribers. Like, I'm fine. Hassan, talk about Joe Rogan without talking about wanting to suck his nipples challenge and possible difficulty. I mean, I'm just being honest. I'd suckle on them nips. I would. Anyone who says they wouldn't suckle on Joe Rogan's nips is a liar, dude. Just to see what's up. HGH? Like, I would just suck the HGH right out. You are completely wrong. I would destroy an eagle because I am built different. I would be really scared to go on a show. This man has guns at home. What? What? No, dude. Joe Rogan is not going to murder someone he disagrees with. What are you fucking crazy? People will normalize Joe Rogan, even though he's indirectly killed people. Meanwhile, people will be furious with you because you've hurt some white people's feelings by saying the C word. Yeah. And I've hurt zero people's feelings. They're just fucking making that shit up. You're outdated on the nipples thing. The notoriety he got from Twitter that changed. Bro, I can't even show this. I feel like this is... That meme is like... I can't click on that meme, dude. That, that looks like feminine presenting nips. You know what I mean? I'm gonna get fucking... I think... Entertaining, allowing That's conspiracy theories of any kind leads to this. It's not shocking the moon landing is fake. Guy becomes anti-vax. I don't know, man. I think people believe in dumb shit. Uh, I just, I don't care as much as long as it's not fucking damaging. Okay. If you're not tying your fucking moon landing was faked conspiracy theory back to like the entirety of the medical community is lying to us about the efficacy of the vaccines and the vaccines actually kill people. Then like, if you don't have that approach, if you don't make that jump, then whatever, who gives a shit if you think the fucking moon landing is fake? Yeah. Okay. You're a fucking dumbass. But, you know, Drug maybe Stanley Kubrick California did actually fucking fake it. You know what I mean? And maybe that's why the government hit him with a heart attack gun after he exposed in Eyes Wide Shut the Illuminati sex no circles. Whatsoever. You know what I mean? Who knows? Also, conspiracy theories are fun. I love conspiracy theories. You guys know this. I literally fucking love looking at conspiracy theories. So, like, I understand the enjoyment that someone could derive out of a conspiracy theory because conspiracy theories are a substitute for people who recognize the world is fucked, but can't comprehend as to why it's fucked. So they literally seek out like cool and fun ways of justifying the way that the world works. So because of that, it's damaging and scary. But, you know, it's just, it's still fun for them. That's why people recognize that shit's fucked. But they can't comprehend it as to why, because they don't believe in fucking, you know, historical materialism. So they turn around and they try to find like, uh, 
a mystical way to justify that, to justify why things are good or why things are fucked up. You know what I mean? And a lot of that mysticism, of course, can be found in uh, an analysis that liberals engage in uh, on the boundaries of identity politics that is lacking any sort of like class analysis. Um, it can be found in uh, the the other side of uh, identity politics, from a racial point of view, uh, uh, with respect to white supremacy. Not that these things are morally equivalent. Don't under don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I don't think like Nazis and fucking SJWs are doing the same thing. Not at all. One is uh, morally incomprehensible. The other one is actually the moral and righteous thing to do in many circumstances. But that's why people uh, find themselves at the in the throes of these sorts of conspiracies. Crystals, uh, astrology, or is it astronomy? Which one's the real one? Astronomy is the real one, right? It's your horoscopes, you know, that sort of shit. Um... Anyway, they label th everything a conspiracy theory so they can claim believing in actual reasonable things is the same as believing in lizard people. Yeah, exactly. It's comforting to think that uh, some cabal at the top of secretly is controlling everything because nobody being in control is terrifying. I mean, there is a fucking cabal at the top that's secretly controlling everything. It's not just a Jewish cabal, though, okay? That's the fucking problem. It's called the bourgeois. It's called those who own capital, okay? And it doesn't matter what their background is. Their background plays no emphasis in this. It is just their relation to the means of production. Okay? That's how it fucking works. And the cabal is obviously much, much larger. And there's like varying degrees of people who, by virtue of their fucking relationship to the means of production, have a different stake or an ownership in this process. Okay? And as a big part of liberal capitalism, a big part of Western liberal democracy is built upon creating a larger pool of people who feel like they also have a vested interest in capital, okay? Who also feel like they're capital owners. A great example of this that I can just like immediately fucking beam on is 401ks. That's why even if you're fucking a, a line uh, cook at a fucking kitchen making like 65 grand a year, okay? You have a 401k, so it makes you feel like you have vested interest in the stock market where you're like, well, you know, stocks are going up and my 401k is looking good, okay? Everybody feels like they are a capital owner under global capitalism. That's the biggest fucking secret that they pump into your fucking brain. It makes you feel like you own the factory when you don't own shit. You don't even own a piece of the factory. You own nothing, okay? The stock market, owned largely by the top 10% of wealth, of course, 90% of the, uh, the, the stock market in the United States is owned by the top 10% of fucking wealth. Okay. Line cooks don't make money like that. Line cooks making, okay, shut the fuck up. Stop hyper-focusing on this shit. Okay. I should have said not a line cook, but like whatever the fucking higher, like you're not a chef, but you're, you know, you're, you're at a higher level in a kitchen. Okay. That's what I meant. Not a line cook restaurant manager. Well, manager is not a great example. Okay, 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 okay. Just shut up, just shut up, just shut up. Sous chef, okay? You're the fucking sous chef. Listen, the main point of this conversation is that you are literally a worker. You are a wage laborer. It comprises the largest percentage of how you make your wealth. You don't have passive income, okay? But the lie that they've told you is that you do actually have passive income and you have a stake, an ownership stake in an invested interest in the stock market performing well. Why? Because when the stock market, which is owned, again, 90% of the wealth is owned by uh, the top 10% of wealth. When the stock market is beaming, when it's doing well, those gains aren't necessarily socialized. Those gains are still kept at the tippy top, at the top 10%. But when the stock market is doing poorly, as is the case under, uh, you know, all matter of, of capitalist governance, those losses, well, those losses are socialized. So if the stock market is doing poorly, you're doing poorly as well. The only thing that actually trickles down is the losses. Never the fucking gains to the same degree. But because you feel like you have a vested interest in the stock market, you think to yourself, it's probably good that the Joe Biden administration is keeping it stable or the Trump administration is keeping it stable. Okay? 
that's not true. You mean because the stock market reflects the actual market? Yeah, dude, you eviscerated me with your facts and logic. Yeah, totally. That's why uh, the, the car manufacturer that uh, recently had a fucking recall of half of their fucking cars is, you know, still outperforming every other car manufacturer that like quintuples uh, uh, the Tesla uh, car manufacturers. These motherfuckers don't have enough authorized dealerships. Like they don't have dealerships. They have nothing. How are they going to do a fucking another? How are they going to do an actual, an actual fucking recall for 400,000 cars? Is no one comprehending this? But no, Tesla is actually not a car company, you fucking buffoon. You simply do not understand this. Tesla is actually a technology company. Okay? I get it. Yeah, exactly. So it makes sense that their, you know, stock prices is mega inflated. By the way, the Ford will start taking orders for the F-150 Lightning on Thursday. I remember you were looking for a car. Bro, I mean, who knows when the fuck that's going to come out. The stock market reflects the actual market. That's why while we had the worst unemployment since the Great Depression, the stock market was at its highest ever. Yeah, dude, totally. Exactly. Yeah, the stock market reflects the actual market. That's why when a company fucking... Uh, uh, a company purchases another company and then fires half the fucking... Uh, uh, it fires half that company, okay? Their stock, price, their stock price increases because they've eliminated effectively redundancy. That's why, of course, uh, you know, the stock market is, is totally not just fucking uh, uh, working on its own set of rules and it's actually just the economy. Even economists don't fucking agree with this, by the way. Point me to a single fucking economist that says when the stock market is doing well, that means the economy is doing well. And uh, I will point to you a fucking idiot, okay?